second half hour begin grade 12, choice 1 and 2, 29th of July, start. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so what do you mean by Oh, sorry, I wasn't referring to that kind of bad diet. Um, so if you consider, for example, a um, buffalo, yeah. all it's getting is one kind of grass with probably very little protein, very little fat, and it's, it takes a long time to digest because it's just plant matter. And so it's got a lot of energy goes into chewing it, a lot of energy goes into digesting it, but it doesn't have an incredibly wide range of nutrients. Okay. Whereas if you consider humans were able to gather fruit, they were able to kill animals and eat meat, plus they were able to grind seeds and stuff like that. So they had a bigger range of nutrients and a better diet. Just the variety of Yes, because the, the greater the variety, the greater. Remember, um, proteins are made of those 20, 20 different amino acids, yeah. in long chains of 20 different amino acids. And there are a number of those that are not found in all plant matter, whereas they are found in a range of different diets. Does that make sense? Okay, large, well-developed brains, which was awesome because then they could make tools, they could use tools. They could use and control fire. And that added a whole new aspect to human life because they could cook and therefore food was easier to digest, but they could also use it as protection and they could also use it to maintain body temperature. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping backwards and forwards and things. So the cranium, remember, is an indication of brain size. So if you look at a stratopithecus, we'll talk about that, quite a small cranium. It's about um, between 400 and 500 CS, cubic centimeters or milliliters. This is Homo erectus and this is Homo sapiens. And this is about 1,300 cubic centimeters. Okay. I wanted to say something and I've lost it. Okay. All right. So early hominids, and that would have been the Australopithecus time, did not initially show an increased brain size. They were quite small brain, about 400 to 500 cubic centimeters compared with 1,300 cubic centimeters for modern humans. Okay, so just a little bit bigger than Coke. Okay, whereas we've got more than a liter, sort of a liter and a half, if you consider um, a liter of milk in the fridge. We've got about a litre and a third. They have about half. They were also physically smaller, about only about four, 40 kilograms as adults. Okay. Hmm? What's wrong? No, I'm like that amazes me now. Okay. A reminder about the definition of hominids. So hominid, remember the modern definition, the group consisting of all modern and extinct great apes. So that's modern humans, and then the modern apes, as opposed to the extinct great apes, chimps, gorillas, orangutans, plus all their immediate ancestors. And then bipedal animals in the fossil record show a mixture of ape-like and human-like features. Now, guys, you would never, ever have to learn something like this. You have to be able to interpret it. So here um, is the timeline from long ago to naught MYA, 
and it's just going through the various examples. You don't have to know these two that are in green. So Ardipithecus, and there's an Ardipithecus as well. You would have to know from Australopithecus onwards. And basically, you just have to know some examples. So we're going to talk about Australopithecus afarensis. So look how long ago it existed, um, about 300, 375 million years ago, 360 million years ago. Whatever you do, if you ask this figure, don't go, it's a little bit more than four, so it's about 4,200, um, four, no, the arithmetic thing that I don't do, four, two million years ago. No, it's between three and four, so it's a little bit more than three. Okay, Homo habilis, Homo gaster, Homo erectus, we're not going to talk about Homo habilbergensis. I'll mention it briefly in passing, you don't have to know it according to the SAGs. Homo neanderthalensis and then Homo sapiens. Okay, and remember you have to know what this line means. So this line means that's when it evolved and that line means that's the time that it became extinct. And because those lines don't carry on up to the top there, like um, Neanderthals there, end of there, then you know that it means that they're extinct. Whereas Homo sapiens is extinct. Okay? If the ends or the beginnings of these lines are fuzzy, it means there's uncertainty as to when they evolved and when they became extinct. So it's around about that time. A fuzzy dip. Okay, exactly the same type of picture, except it goes in this direction. And this is seven million years ago, and that's today. Okay, and this is just talking about a few different examples. Divided up into green being humans, pre-human primates, and important developments, so there it will give examples of important developments that happened. And it shows when an organism evolved and when an organism became extinct. Okay, same thing here. Okay, this one more than this one shows relationships. So what it's showing is it sort of, if you drew branches between these organisms, it's showing you which organisms gave rise to which. So Australopithecus boisei evolved from Australopithecus africanus, which evolved from Australopithecus afarensis, according to this individual's interpretation. This doesn't show which organisms evolved from which. So if Australopithecus boys are evolved from Africa, how come there's a time when neither of them? So that's a fuzzy area. That's, a, that's an area where there's no fossil evidence that this one still existed in that way. So they, what they're going on is they're going on the similarities between the fossils of these and the fossils of those. That it looks as if this one evolved from that and they would probably live in the same area. Okay, all right. This one shows relationships. Okay, so again, all you must be able to do is interpret it. So if I say to you, um, which organisms evolved first out of these primates, it could be this one with the unpronounceable name and that one, you know, blah, blah, that one. A little bit later on, that one, etc., etc. And then you could say, I could say to you, what is the most closely related to Homo sapiens, Homo heidelbergensis, and which organism evolved from Homo heidelbergensis? If you look at this little branch going off there, Homo neanderthalensis. Okay. Right, you're happy, you're able to interpret these. They're very fond of these, very fond. If they ask you a figure, take a ruler 
and measure very accurately up to the top. So if they say to you, when did Australopithecus africanus become extinct, you would take a ruler, go straight up, and say at about two million years ago, two and a bit million years ago, two, 2.1 million years ago, something like that. Very accurately, guys. Okay, same kind of thing. Okay. This is merely according to the interpretation of the person who drew it. And you can look at one, and you can look at another one, and they will be different. And it's just different interpretations. Okay, please don't go and learn all these things. Don't go and learn like Paranthus robustus, Paranthus boys, yeah, etc. Which you can see is actually called a different name here. Yeah. Okay, you can see this scientist called those same things Australopithecus boisei and Australopithecus robustus. This one called it Paranthus boisei, Paranthus, Paranthus robustus. Okay, all right. I think you need to go and have a significant break. So, yeah, please go, please go and walk around the car park at a good distance from each other. You end guys of, can go and get it. End of second half hour, grade 12, phase 1 and 2, tonight of July. Please, please guys, tonight.